Hi guys and welcome back. It is incredibly windy. I'm, that's why I'm perched here behind the car trying to get a little bit of shelter from these uh, yeah, very blustery conditions. It's pretty chilly too. But today we're going to see if we can take a long exposure in these really awful, terrible conditions. And I'm going to run through the whole process, how I get perfect long exposures every time when it's really, really horrible like this. So it's going to be a bit of a shoot and edit video today. Uh, wonderful location, conditions, anything could happen tonight. It could be absolutely amazing, or it could be a very, very overcast black and white image that we take. Either way, I think it's going to be uh, a good shoot tonight. I've got a really good feeling about it. So uh, yeah, let's make our way down short walk here to this amazing cliff top location and see if we can get an image tonight and not get blown off the cliff. Fortunately, it's coming from the sea. Okay, let's go. Always oh, blustery up here. So Everything's set up, composition set up, got my tripod quite high and actually normally if you're on a cliff top and it's very very windy like this you want to try and keep it as low as you possibly can to reduce any shake but to get the view, the angle of view that I need here I need to set my tripod up quite high but the spikes on the tripod are helping to keep everything stable um, so what I've done is I've increased my ISO to ISO 250 and at f7.1 that's giving me a 30th of a second exposure with the polarizer on the front so Actually, that's getting everything nice and sharp. At 30th of a second, there's not too much camera shake on here. So uh, I think we're all okay with 30th of a second. But obviously, when we put a 10-stop filter on, we're going to increase the exposure time considerably. And then as the wind <laughs> comes through the scene, comes up and over this cliff top, obviously it's going to shake the tripod and we're going to end up with a blurred photograph. So what we're going to do, I'm going to take two exposures. We're going to take one set up here with the polarizer on at 30th of a second and then we're going to take another one with the 10 stop filter on and we've got to blend those two images when we get back to photoshop so we're going to run through the whole process like i mentioned before likewise there's a lot of mist actually on the horizon there's tons of guillemots here the guillemots come here to nest on these wonderful sea stacks and yeah it's an incredible location we don't have any light though whatsoever right now no light at all which is a bit of a shame However, I think this could make a nice moody shot anyway. And the colour of this water, it's a deep emerald green. Look absolutely amazing. So through this uh, next 10 or 15 minutes or so, as the sun's setting behind me, I'm going to take a series of images. Every so often, I'm going to take the filter off, take an exposure as the light changes, hitting these rocks, and then pop the 10 stop back on again take a few more longer exposures down there of the sea. I might also experiment with some quicker longer exposures as well to see if I can get a little bit more texture and detail in the water just to give me some options when we get back to post-processing. So yes, I will take this image now and then see you back at the computer where we run through the edit. So here we are in Lightroom. What an amazing location by the way, absolutely stunning place. We didn't get fantastic sunset but we did get some quite nice dramatic moody conditions so that's cool and that's I think the look I'm going to go for with these final edits so as I mentioned when I was out in the field when it's really really windy it's very very difficult to stop the vibration on your tripod and camera and be able to capture a sharp image when you're doing a long exposure so let's take a look at the two images that I'm decided on or that I've settled on for this edit so this is the first one which is my 30th of a second exposure, which was quick enough to get everything sharp. You can see there's wonderful detail here in the, in the stack rocks here with all the guillemots. Yeah, I'm really happy with the sharpness in that image. And then here's the long exposure, which is 20 seconds. Now, obviously, if we zoom into the rocks here, you can see how much the wind has rattled the tripod through that long exposure and that is obviously not what we want in our final image however 
the sea and everything because it's a long exposure anyway and everything is moving it doesn't really affect those areas so what we're going to do is blend those two images together in Photoshop and then just show you how you can be very selective about how much of that long exposure you then paint into the final image so this allows you to be a little bit more creative as well it's a fairly simple process now I have edited these two images just quickly here in Lightroom. I'm not gonna go through that because I think it'll make the video too long, but essentially just basic edits. What I am gonna do before I take these images into Photoshop though is take off the sharpening as I prefer to do my sharpening in Photoshop. So I'm just gonna go into both of those images, take the sharpening off and then highlight both of those by pressing Shift and highlighting both of them. Then I'm gonna right click and click edit in, open as layers in Photoshop, and that's gonna take both of those layers into Photoshop so we can then do our selective masking and editing to them. First of all, I want to put the long exposure at the top. So I'm just gonna slide that up and drag it up. So the long exposure is our top image. Then I'm gonna highlight both of the layers by again pressing Shift, highlight both of those layers, and then come up to edit. Uh, where are we? auto align layers and click OK. Now what that's going to do is just going to align those two layers up for us because obviously when things were moving with the wind, obviously the two layers are going to be slightly different. They're not going to line up. So auto align layers just allows us to align those layers. So we should now see that obviously they're lining up well, which is great. So what I want to do first is come up to the top layer and add a layer mask to it. And uh, this is a, a white layer mask. What we're gonna do is invert that layer mask. So if I press Control and I on the keyboard, that's gonna invert the layer mask. And now with the black mask, all we're seeing is the layer below. So what we're gonna do now is paint on the, uh, the layer above, the longer exposure. So we're gonna paint that into that area. Now there's multiple ways in which you can make selections in Photoshop. I've never had a huge amount of success with you know, all of these, uh, like say for example, the lasso tool, you can use that to draw around or the pen tool to draw around and make a mask. I've never had a huge amount of success, to be honest with it, especially when you've got something so textured and detailed like this, Photoshop really struggles to you know, determine between the two. It's not so bad, it, like for this, for this section here, it would quite easily do that. But when you get down here in the rocks and the sea, it's all very similar. Photoshop, in my opinion, struggles to uh, make that selection. It comes a bit fiddly. Actually, I prefer to just do it with a paintbrush. I find it easier. Uh, but that's just my opinion. Um, you know, you may find it different, but depending on what image it is you're editing. So let's grab our brush tool. Now, what we're going to do is make sure our opacity and our flow is set to 100. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to paint in this long exposure like I mentioned. So we want to do this as best we can possibly do it but, you know, without taking up too much time. And you can see the difference actually, can't you, between the two. I'm not worried about that too much at the minute though. Basically I'm going to zoom around this, being careful not to go over the rocks too much because Obviously, we do know that the rocks are blurred and we don't really want to be painting blurred rocks into our image. So I'm gonna go around. I don't think it matters too much when we get down here in the shadows. I'm just gonna go all the way around the outside first. Now you can, this is where it probably gets quite tricky where you've got rocks down in the, in the bottom there that's I'm going to come back to some of these areas in a minute. I often find it's easier to paint things back in than it is this way. I don't know, maybe that's just the way my, my brain works, but let's, uh, let's just zoom around the outside. I'm using quite a big brush here. You probably might get on better with a smaller brush, but I want to get around this fairly quickly for the sake of the video. Now, obviously, with a feathered brush, you're going to overlap these layers a little bit. And 
I find it's now a lot, you can see here where the edge of that is blurred. What I would do is come in and put my black brush on and go, grab a smaller brush and then, you know, go around the edge and just uh, paint back in that detail that we lost. Obviously, this can be quite time consuming depending on you know, what you're dealing with for this image. If you find like here, you can just see a little bit of the C, just press X on your keyboard, that changes the brush back to white. Okay, <clears throat> obviously I speeded that up for you just to save, uh, you know, wasting your time. But essentially that took me about, I think four, five minutes probably just to run around that uh, pretty roughly. I could have spent a bit, bit longer to be honest, but there's a reason I didn't and that is because I'm gonna bring back some of the opacity of the layer below, uh, just because I don't want to give this image a full long exposure effect. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Also, I don't like the sky particularly in the long exposure version. So I'm going to bring back the sky in the other shot. So basically to do that, I'm going to duplicate this layer here, the bottom layer, press Control and J. I'm going to drag the copied layer on top. Now, We've got this uh, sky. This is the sky that I want to keep in the image. I think it frames the image better and adds to the mood and drama. Whereas the uh, the other sky is a bit lighter at the top and tends to take the eye, even though it's a bit, you know probably a bit more detail in the sky, it tends to take the eye up out of the top of the frame. So I think this frames it, this claggy sort of you know damp, atmospheric, misty kind of conditions. I think probably suits the image better. So. What I'm going to do is add a layer mask to it and then I'm going to grab my gradient tool which is over here. Sometimes this will be the paint bucket so you might need to right click on it and then select gradient tool. So we've got our gradient tool selected, I'm going to click on our mask and then I'm going to click somewhere about here and then just drag up so just above the horizon and that's going to paint in. You can see now it's the black stripe here is revealing everything that's below it, which is obviously the layer that we've just adjusted. So I'll turn that off and see it's just affecting the sky there. So we've brought back in the original sky into this shot and then that black stripe is everything being revealed below it, which is obviously all the work that we've just done. So I'm going to click on the middle layer now, which was the layer with the long exposure, and I'm going to come up to the opacity uh, tab here and I'm going to adjust the opacity. So what's great about this is we can bring in as much of that long exposure or take away as much of that long exposure as we want to. So if we come to zero, obviously it's <coughs> making that layer completely invisible now, but what we can do is just start to bring in that long exposure um, back into the image until we feel like we're, we're happy with it. So this is great. It's, it gives you complete flexibility about how much of that long exposure you want to paint into the image. Now I, I like my long exposures to have some texture and detail with them as well. So uh, I think maybe somewhere around about there for me is good because we've got all of these lovely white longer exposures painted in but we've also seen some of that you know lovely reflections and the dark textures we've got in the water. So you could play around with the opacity here and also what the opacity does, obviously the lower the opacity goes on that layer, the more of the sharper image we're painting in. So essentially if you only wanted to paint a little bit of your long exposure in, it would make the, uh, the process of cutting this image out a lot easier, easier because obviously you're painting less of the blurred exposure over the top of it, if that makes sense. So I think for me personally, around about 53%, something like that is good for this. I, I'm happy with the way that looks, quite moody, dark and dramatic. Obviously painted in some of the details, but we've got that motion and movement with the white water as well. So I think it works pretty well. And before I take it back into Lightroom, I would obviously sharpen my image by coming up to filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. And generally for an image of around 6,000 pixels wide, I'm looking at somewhere between 180 and 200, a radius of one pixel works for me.
So guys, I'll put the finished image up at the end for you to take a look at. What an amazing location. It's one of these iconic locations that many people visit when they come to Pembrokeshire. It's an absolutely amazing spot and obviously a well photographed spot as well. But yeah, absolutely brilliant. And I quite enjoy this dark, moody conditions that we had this evening. So yes, if you enjoy this video, please do consider hitting the thumbs up and subscribing if you haven't done so already, if you'd like to see more content such as this. If you'd like to support what I do here on YouTube, consider checking out the Photographer's Clubhouse, where we learn, share, and inspire one another to create amazing photographs, take part in monthly challenges, and watch my monthly videos over there too. Your support is very much appreciated. Anyway guys, until the next time, take care, and I will see you soon.